Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We'll just wait for the elevator music to stop, I hope. Maybe not, I'll push on. One and all, my name's Craig Stockings. I've got the pleasure of speaking to you today about the BA. And unfortunately, or fortunately, because we're live streaming this event, I need to tie myself to the microphone here and to the computer. Not my normal state of being, and I'm not being unfriendly. I just, uh, I'm not able, I'm told, to move around. I'm also not going to lecture to you today, guys. If for those of you who end up wearing a uniform and coming into this lecture theatre, you'll have plenty of time for lectures. I want to run this more as a conversation. So the first, uh, first point I'll make there is when I say something or I'm talking about something that is of particular interest or didn't quite make sense or you've got a question, just interrupt me. Put your hand up and we can go from there. And I'll make sure not to talk at you for too long such that we've got plenty of time to take questions, um, questions at the end. But we are here to talk about the Bachelor of Arts today. I know some of you may be considering what is that or should I do that? The answer is it's the best thing you can do here and yes, you're going to do that. But give me the next half an hour to, to get you to that point. How's that? Any questions before I begin? Alrighty, this, you all do look a little bit dark from where I'm standing, so forgive me if I miss something. So we do have a set of slides, mandatory slides, I need to go through and show you today as we go. Let's do that, but let's not dwell on them. As I say, I'd rather let's have a bit of a conversation. So that's a bit of background to what uh, things were, types of things we're going to cover today. But here's the big one. Why take a BA? So often, talking around the traps and messages we get even from government and other places is what is the value of a BA? I'm going to stand before you here and tell you not just for those of you who intend to spend the rest of your life in uniform, but those of you who are going to go on to have multiple careers and various different things, there is every reason in the world to study a BA. And not just because six of the last 11 Prime Ministers had one, maybe that's a sign. You may or may not have various feelings about those Prime Ministers. My point here is this. Unlike other degrees or more specific or more vocational degrees in the sector, this BA will, not, will teach you to do no particular job. Instead, it'll teach you to do every job. And there's something really meaningful about that. That is the founding philosophical principle behind a Bachelor of Arts. Prepares you to think in cases when we're talking about the faculty here at ADFRA, prepares you to be an officer or a better officer than you otherwise would. Prepares you to be a better person. Now, they're bold claims, and I'll go on to talk a little bit about why I think that's the case. But let me put another one out there for you, one and all. If you think about the things going on in society today, the fake news and the conspiracy theorists and all that, wouldn't happen if, you all had, if we all had BAs. <laughs> wouldn't happen. We're going to teach you, and we do teach you, how to think about the problems in the world today and use evidence-based thinking and critical thinking to learn about the world as it exists. The last point there says the writing's on the wall. What I mean by that is uh, often in my job here, I have cause to have relationships and contact with some of the other uh, military academies in the Western world. The American Service Academies, for example, the UK Military Academy, Canadians, and so on and so forth. After the experience of conflict in the Middle East for the last 20 years, almost all of those places, even the American Air Force Academy, the home of STEM, right? is re-raising humanities faculties. In the case of Colorado, it's a social science and a humanities faculty. And the reason for that is there are no equations to solve the problems that confront us today. There are no, no mathematical formulas that are going to help you as an officer or help navigate the complexity of today. There is value in social science study to help, uh, help make those navigations possible. That's why a humanities school exists at a place like this. But it's beyond that too. Let me say, how many people in today's world have one job throughout their whole lives? Not many. Or even someone who have, has the one job and stays in that particular level of that job for their whole lives? Not many. But let me pick a degree that's not at this place. I'm not controversial, right? Think of a Bachelor of Horticulture. No offence if anybody has a Bachelor of Horticulture. That's fantastic. You would be an excellent horticulturalist, right? But are you going to do that job forever? What happens when you own the horticultural company? What skills do you need then? See, this is the difference between narrow and vocational tertiary education or the type of tertiary education that prepares you for every level of the things you might do.
There's some pretty bold claims I've made. Um, I'm gonna spend a couple of slides here now, guys, take, tra taking you from those sorts of claims to how we might achieve that here under a BA program at UNSW Canberra. I'm not gonna read through the bullet points, you can read them for yourself, but clear, critical thinking is the key here. Hence my reference to um, fake news and all the rest of it. Critical thinking and the skills that go along with it. I've got two teenage daughters myself, 19 and 17. Truth is not a TikTok, right? Or a YouTube vid. We need the skills to be able to filter that information and make, make choices of our own based on evidence uh, that you see around us. That's what we do. Find and assess relevant information. Why people behave as they do. And it goes beyond, even forget the job and forget the degree, it goes to being a, more, a better equipped person. And again, philosophically, that's what a BA is all about. And a basis for intelligent and thought leadership. And I'll make another point here that I'm sure my colleagues in uniforms down the front will, will, um, will agree with. If you end up here, for those of you who have those aspirations, and wear a uniform as an officer, junior officer, and then one day chief of the defence force, you are not paid to carry a pack or shoot straight. That's great if you can do that. You are not paid to drive the ship, right? Or drive the tank. You are paid to lead the people that do. You are paid for your brain, not your brawn. This then, and the reason this place exists, is to develop that brain. Let's develop it in a way that's going to serve you for out your whole of your career, all the other careers you may embark upon along the way. Sometimes that message gets lost with all the testosterone and energy of youth, right? But you are here because of your head, not your hands. That just sort of reiterates that some of the points I've just made. Where there is vocational need and technical need, the company will teach you it. If it were different, then your career in uniform would be defined by your degree. It's not. Do any degree you choose. I think the, impo and the important point on that slide, if I may be so bold, is to suggest that we go beyond technical competence. It's great if you can do a degree that teaches you how to design and build a bridge. How often are you going to do that? Really? Standing in front of people like this, communicating with people, writing in an effective way, taking complex problems and making them meaningful is what you do every day. So if that's, if that's the broad brush uh, things that I'd like to talk about, guys, I'll get in a little bit, more, something a bit more specific here. And I do need to show you some slides that are about UNSW Canberra more generally. So most of you will be aware of some of the points made on those slides, but um, in case you're not, here's some information about us and the university. And we are one of UNSW's nine faculties. We are the same as any other faculty. We just happen to be in Canberra. My salary is not paid for by defence, it's paid for by the university. Defence trusts us with its undergrads to give them an education. Doesn't tell me what to teach, doesn't tell me how to teach it. So all of the uh, advantages of working with the GA University and the research and the teaching that all comes with that is part of this place as well. So I work within and next door to a military base, but I'm not of that military base. It's a reasonably unique relationship. Here's some statistics that the university always likes to brag about, particularly that 55th thing in the bottom there. About 20,000 universities in the world, so we're doing okay. It's worth dwelling for some time, I think, particularly for those of you who may have had experience at other universities with respect to staff to student ratios. When we write, run tutorials here um, during the BA in, the, in your classes, it's usually a ratio of about one to 12. Nowhere else in the university sector in Australia that I'm aware of can run a staff to student ratio like that. And that has meaningful consequences and outcomes for education. It's one of the great benefits of being here, I think, and it's got a lot of flow on effects and benefits bit, uh, that we can talk about a bit later on as well. Next few slides sort of reiterate 
one and all, some of the points I've tried to make a little bit earlier, these are the sorts of things we're, we're about when we're talking about a BA. How the world works, answering the difficult questions, not in a formulaic way. Sometimes there are no clear answers to questions, right? We live in ambiguity. I particularly dwell on those, those points on the slide are about analytical and critical ability. There's many topics, and we'll get, get into them shortly, that you might choose to specialise in or courses you might choose to take within a BA, and they're important in their own right, but underlying everything we do is teaching us how to think in a modern world, how to come with, come with decisions and distill the complex into the digestible. How do we do that? We always ask questions. We always be controversial where we need to be. We push the boundaries. Sometimes there are no simple, simple questions, but we equip students to keep asking them. As an example, I myself from time to time teach a course called Australian Military History, and we all question things like the Anzac myth. Not just to be disrespectful, but to make you think. And you'd never have to agree with me. You have a, but you do need a view of your own based on more than social media, based on evidence and critical thinking. So we'll get more, a little bit more of the nuts and bolts of the BA now because that's what we need to do. We, at the current structure at the university here, undergraduates after their first year of, of um, doing arts courses need to declare a major. In fact, they declare two. So within the courses or the programs we offer, most students will have chosen two majors. Within the school I run, the, those majors and programs include English and Media Studies, uh, History, Indonesian Studies, which has a language component as well, and International and Political Studies, which is IR Theory and Political Science. It's also possible within a BA to major in Geography, which is run actually out of the Science School, and to major in Business, which is run out of the Business School as well. So whilst I own the degree per se, there is some flexibility to major and do courses from outside the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. I'm going to run through each of those programs now and you can see some dot points along the side there about what you, the sorts of things you might be doing in each major or each program. And the first one is English and Media Studies. It's not extensive, these lists. Just designed to give you a bit of a flavour. Certainly we do more than what's on the screen here. You'll note those history types of offerings that are listed there have quite a military flavour. We have a duality within that program. There will be, or there, an, there will be an opportunity, or there is an opportunity to study non-military subjects as well too. We're not giving you vocational training here, but rather education. As I mentioned, Indonesian studies, which has a language component, but not only a language component, talking about issues in the region here, uh, issues of religion, issues of identity, issues that are prevalent within Southeast Asia, in Indonesia particularly. Lots of things change in the world. Geography never does. Indonesia is still our nearest uh, and largest northern neighbour. Again, just a sampling of the sorts of course offerings that might be found within that um, International Political Studies or IPS major. Some business options if you choose that major as well. I won't spend too much time on these because they're not really has subjects, guys, but no, no bias at all. <laughs> and geography as well. So one thing we do do a little bit differently here, and you might have heard it in the other presentations that you have, but there are a number of directed studies for all degrees at, um, at UNSW Canberra, and I've indicated a couple of there. Uh, students do need to choose electives from general education and from prescribed electives too. And I've, we've listed some of the courses that are involved in those things. This is just because the um, defence has decided these things are important for all degrees or undergraduates, so you do need to do some of these subjects as well. It might be a surprise to you guys at the front, this is all going to change. This is the picture that's right now though. 
So by the time you get here, it may be different, but I can say there may be parts of your degree that you have you, that are mandatory as well as, as, well as um, ones you choose. Very quickly, the first year um, or loads and expectations and loadings. And we have some trainee officers in the front here. I'm sure I'll answer questions about this. What's life like and how big is the load doing a BA? But at least what you've got in front of you here is some indicative type information. No real need to worry too much about this. It's all in the course guide and the, or the program guides and these things tend to change a bit from year to year anyway. I'm just trying to give you a flavour of what it might be like to study for three years as a BA. I guess that's it in tabular form. Whether we stay with two majors or go back to one in the future remains to be seen. Programs won't vary significantly. They will around the edges. One question that came up quite strongly this morning were entry requirements. I can give you some information about entry requirements, but it's really um, it's the defence side of the house which chooses my undergrads for us. So the basic requirement for a Bachelor of Arts, I think this year's matriculation ATAR requirement was in the 70s. Uh, that is not a hard and fast figure. There is a requirement to matriculate into the degree that you're going to study here at the Defence Academy, but the selection of those students beyond simple uh, ATAR scores and academics is a defence issue. I can tell you, because it's not a state secret, that defence is growing by about 20,000 in the next five to seven years, which means the cadet body is going to go from around 1,100 to 1,500. So um, now's the chance, I guess, in the next coming years. And of course, no surprise, we're assuming English language proficiency. It would be difficult not to have that in a BA, I think. I'm going to pause it there for two reasons. One, I want to hear some questions, and, and I think that's the important thing of today for the moment. But secondly, your time at AFA is probably better answered by the, by the people in uniform down the front here than it is for me. But can I hold here and ask, are there, are there any questions about some of the material I've talked about so far? Don't ask me to name the Prime Ministers in, on the spot. I could do a few. Anything at all, even the difficult questions. I may not promise, to, I may not know the answer, but I'll give you my honest response. Oh, sorry, yeah? I don't. I mean, I'm sure we could look up the UNSW handbook. I'm not, I'm not suggesting these are hard, fast things either. There are other things taken into consideration, put an old uniform on that I used to wear when selecting officer candidates. Academics is one of those things, but not the only thing. Yeah? Um, is he assuming knowledge of English? Is what level of English is that like having his literary studies subject? No, no, just, just English proficiency. You can write and read English at an at a undergrad proficient level. No, you don't have to have studied in English at high school. That question came up before too. That's we, eight hours and we did at high school is not so much a thing once you get here. Yep. Uh, when I went through in the dark ages, right? When I did the HSC in New South Wales, I did all, only STEM subjects because that was the way to get marks back then, right? Four unit maths and chemistry and physics and all that stuff. I was good at it, hated it. Came here, did a Bachelor of Science, realised I hated it. You only get one chance at an undergraduate degree and flipped over and studied history instead. If there is a job waiting for the end, you can take this chance to do something that some people in society can't. That's do what you love. Yep. So because it's a double major, can you major in any other? Like, can you do, say, a geography and like, Indonesian? Yes. Or all of them? Yes. So I think there were six I put up there. You just got to pick two yep. in the current structure. Yep. Yeah, the main campus does trimesters. We don't. We stick to an, um, a more traditional two-semester model. We do do summer schools uh, at the end of the period, which is important for some students to catch up sometimes. The reason we stay on a two-semester model is defence and these guys have got training requirements external to the degree that we can't really mess with. So we are at the moment a two-semester. I can't see that changing, honestly. Yeah. It's, it happens at the same time. Uh, if you're offered a place at Defence Academy, you'd also be offered a place at UNSW, and you'll have your, you would have your 
uh, degree nominated at that stage, but there is provision, correct me guys, that these changes can be made later on depending on, on service needs. So it happens at the same time. Part of the process to add for East New South Wales. I only really see students when they arrive in first year. Right up the back. You might have mentioned this at the start, so I missed that. Um, is there a split between, um, in, in Adwa itself, between um, the, the arts, um, ha ha what percentage of art, the, the students here are arts, and then the division between uh, each of the services? Um, can you have predominantly I don't have those figures on my fingertips. I can tell you that the BA or I'm responsible for just under a quarter of the cadet body at present. Um, so the would be doing the BA and that cadet body is just shy of 1,100 at the moment as far as I can remember. So that gives a sense of how many people are, are right now studying a BA. Service breakdowns are a different thing. We don't get, they're not equal blocks of the service as thirds anyway. Um, some services are more, people can be more attracted to STEM type courses. I just don't know that answer. But we see all three uniforms in every class I've ever taught. Yeah. Yeah, there is. In the UNSW handbook, there certainly is all the subjects that are available. Some of the ones listed there, there'll be great big lists. Um, we don't put on all of them all of the time but it'll give you a sense of what's available in a given time. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's a bit dark, I can hardly see. Yeah, perhaps. I'd have to look at the particular circumstance of that degree program. The important thing is you would need enough credit points within those two majors to have the double major. It, the, the, with two majors, that ability is cut is a bit less than what it used to be. But there's nothing in the rules to say that couldn't happen, provided the credit points added up. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, I do have to stay close to here and I can't see you. Uh, when is first year end up? Around how, up to how many free electives would one be on the agenda? Any one of you guys at the front to talk about first year? Yeah, thank you. You have to come round to the, be the rock star on the... On the mic. So, oh, sorry. In our uh, first year, you're picking four free electives. So, um, if for each semester, so eight all up, and that's so that you can get a taste of what majors you actually want to go into. And then once you move into second and third year, you'll do two uh, prescribed electives a year, and then so that gives you enough room to, do, to complete your two majors. Yeah. And do you actually mind if I just answer that other question as well? So um, there's a lot of overlapping, sorry, there's a lot of overlapping with um, not quite so much the science, so with geography and Indonesian as they're quite niche um, subjects that you need to complete to get all your credits. But so I'm doing um, a majoring in politics and business, but this year I'm doing a history subject and last year I did an English subject. So you're really able to kind of be very flexible with what you want to learn and where you want to go with your degree. So it's definitely something that you can look at. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is David Stahl. I'm just one of the historians here. And one thing I was gonna say that I think is really important, I know you guys are getting bombarded with lots of information, even this 20, 25 minutes of just information about the university. One thing I would say that I cannot emphasize strongly enough to all of you, and I'm not trying to sell our university, it's just objectively true. <laughs> It's measurable as well. If you're going to multiple open days, it's a good question to ask. You notice that just one of the facts and figures we put up there was this student-staff ratio. The single most important thing for a lot of people getting through a degree, an arts degree, but any degree, is motivation. The reality is students spend their whole life in education. Then they get to university and they're being asked to do a higher order again. Now it's great, some of my students, I would like to say maybe 20%, some of them maybe even here, are great students who do great work and they don't need to be motivated. A lot of students don't fall into that. They're struggling, it's a lot to do, right? Sm small staff student rela uh, ratios, defense I think cap us at about 13, right? Go to University of Canberra and ask how many my colleagues over there are having to have in their tutorials, you're plus 30 now, right? The smallest, this year, in my Russian history course, has six. Six. 
Success in education is all about relationships. It's about knowing who your students are, so they're struggling, oh, that guy didn't do well in the last one. I remember who he is, I know his name, I know where he's at, and we're gonna have a chat. And that's great, right? That's gold, it gets them through it, they can come to us, there's not that many people I teach, so my door is always open, you don't have to make a time, you can make a time, it's respectful to make a time, but you can just wander on in. And that's the virtue of this place, right? For all the things that you're considering in which university, and yes, there are plus and minuses to this place as well, but as I see it, if it's all about student success, that's the thing that I think sells this place more than perhaps anything else. But yeah, thanks very much. Any more? Yes. Do you offer a combined degree and or an honours year? Yeah, we do offer an honours year. Our honours year is different to some uh, or most other universities in that there's a gap. Once students finish their degree here and graduate from ADFA, they are typically, well, particularly for the Army, they spend another year in, on single service training, and at that point, they come back for honours. It's possible, and we have Air Force uh, honours candidates who've come back straight after their third year degree and do it, but usually there's a small gap. We absolutely do honours. Our combined degrees, not so much. We need to get, defence requires these guys to be out and done, finished within their time frame so they can get on and do the job. But having said that, um, the faculty is more than the teaching of undergrads. We have extensive masters offerings that are open to civilians as well as people connected to defence. We have a heap of research students, masters, PhD level, all the rest of it. Typical faculty of the University of New South Wales. Often throughout an individual's subsequent career, they might be posted back to do postgraduate study, they might do it on their own part time, um, coursework by master study, those sorts of things. So the, the options continue and we're involved with that in that as well. It's just we tend at Open Day to focus a little bit about the undergrad experience, but it's much more than that as far as the school's concerned. Yes? Is it possible to do a combined degree outside of the defence, sort of structurally out of the structure? So if you do your arts degree, then that's more? That would be that'd be a question for the career managers within within their single service. Certainly there would be no, I mean, there's nothing in the university sector stopping you to do as many under, undergraduate degrees as you like, but that would be a negotiated process with, with the career manager of the, of, of the service that a person was in. Typically those opportunities come a little bit later. A normal pattern would be to go to the fleet, into the service, into the Air Force, do some time and then continue your study. I'm not saying that's a preferred model, that tends, tends to be the, a tip, more typical model. Yeah. Is there a part-time option? Not here. One of the reasons for that is it's, it's been deemed, uh, one of the reasons this place exists is to get people of all three services together and to build relationships uh, to, in a tri-service way. Only 20 minutes, half an hour ago, I walked past somebody outside there who was taking their son to open day. I hadn't seen that guy since I graduated from this place in the dark ages. I, and it's almost as if the, uh, it was yesterday. That, those relationships manifest within the job too. I remember the first time we ever got on a Hercules aircraft to jump out of it, the person flying it was my section commander here when I was a cadet, which was both, which was both frightening as well as, <laughs> as, as endearing. But they, they, those, and because of the importance of those connections, not part-time. Now we have, because of COVID, been doing a lot of online teaching, but that's not a substitute for the relationship building here. But again, that's straying outside of my area of authority into the defence side. Sorry, mate. Could you lend yourself a BA degree in any of the um, missionary roles in the RAF? Sorry? Could you do a BA degree with any of the missionary crew roles in the RAF? I'm not, I'm not sure. Can you answer that one? Yeah. I'm not, I think I know what you're asking, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Hi. Um, so I'm actually in missionary crew myself. Um, so. You can do any degree except for the engineering streams, um, and that's what science, cyber, business, arts, you can do any one of them and you're fine. That's typical for most roles. Some roles like logistics, you need to do a business component, so you can only do a Bachelor of Business or an arts degree with a major in business, but it's all on a case-by-case -case basis. For mission air crew, yes, you can do arts, definitely. Yes. Um, I was just wondering about holidays and, and when kids come 
These guys get paid to do a degree, they don't need holidays. <laughs> no, there's zero hex, right? Holidays. Do you want to? Um, so like what was said before, you have two semesters in the year and they're broken down in typically um, kind of like terms into six week blocks. So you have a um, mid semester leave period of typically two weeks. Um, but at the end of the year in December, you'll have up to a month, month and a half, depending on which service your um, child or friend is um, at. Um, so for me personally, um, Army, we do a lot of single service training and a lot of Army training during the uni breaks um, to let us focus more on the Army side of it and not so much the academics. My um, colleagues in the um, RAF and Navy, however, have a lot more time at home. Um, I say that, not jealous. Um, so yeah, so um, it depends really on your year level and what service you choose. So um, for the Navy, for example, they may miss out on one leave period a year. For Army, I can miss out on all of them but one. Like there's, um, it really just depends on what service you're at and what um, course you do along the way. But you will see your child at some point, hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Can you just hold up there for a sec? <laughs> Another common question that comes up, um, and we may as well get on the front foot here, is what is daily life actually like for an art student? What does it look like? Um, and again. again um, so again, it depends on what your um, degree is. So if you choose Bachelor of Arts, um, I have uh, 12 contact hours a week. So that's either an hour lecture or an hour uh, tutor. So my morning typically starts either at 0600 or 0700 with roll call, um, and then that goes into either an inspection or a drill. Once you finish that, you have joint military education training, which can either be learning about the cyberspace domain um, or PT. Um, once you've completed that um, at 10 o'clock through till about 6 p.m., it's all academic. So you have plenty of time to study, plenty of time to go to the gym, plenty of time to get lunch with your friends. Um, Bachelor of Arts allows you to have a bit more space to organise your academics, but also plenty of time to maintain that lifestyle. So it's, um, it's great in being able to get yourself educated and um, immersed within the technology and the education all around um, the UNSW, but you're also able to enjoy life in the process, not so much your engineering friends, you won't see them ever. Um, <laughs> but it is a really good way to, um, I guess, bond even more. I find that most art students are more seen um, is probably the right word for it throughout the week. And again, it can change. So for example, on Mondays, I have three contact hours. On Wednesday, I have none. Um, so it just depends on the type of courses you take, how your timetable looks for that semester and what you choose to do. But this the morning, so from uh, 0600 through to 10 o'clock, uh, the military own you. And then from 10 o'clock till six, you have uni. That's pretty much how it is every day of the week, unless it differs like today on a Saturday. Are there any questions? Yes. You get the to Absolutely. Um, not today, um, but it depends. So you'll do your first six weeks of training during YOFT, so that doesn't count. You'll obviously be here during the weekends because time is valuable. But um, on the weekends, from Friday, depending on your knockoff time, so close of business Friday around 4 p.m., um, from 4 p.m. onwards till Sunday, whenever you decide to get back, given that you could have an inspection on Monday morning, the weekend's yours. You can go to Jarvis Bay, you can go to the like, snow. It's all up to you, but you have that time off. Any other questions? No? Awesome. Okay. Cheers, thank you. And, and plenty of time, of course, in the BA to do your course readings as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other more general questions, one and all? Yes, up the back. Uh, we're, we're, back, we're back face to face now and there are some precautionary measures in place like masks in certain situations and so on and so forth, but back to face to face. Uh, that could, unfortunately that could change in accordance with the health situation, but that's how we are right now. Well thank you, it's been my pleasure to talk to you all this afternoon. I'm going to hang around the front here to answer any particular questions anyone might have. Um, I'll get my colleagues in uniform to, to wait around the front too. Um, <laughs> that's not me. Other, other than that, I look forward to seeing many of those faces next year in a BA. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.